Did you know that God created you to be bold and fearless and intrepid? That's right, you can walk without fear in your life, so stay tuned to find out how. Why live a normal life when you could be living the abundant life? Welcome to the Abundant Life Program with Ashley and Carly Teredes. Hello and welcome to Abundant Life. So glad you've joined us today in the lounge. We've got a great program for you today. We're talking about being fearless. You know, God has created us to be fearless, to be bold Amen. and have, have a, you know, a fearless mentality, right? not, to be, not to be in fear, not to be um, you know, uh, distracted by fear. And, mm -hmm. and you know, fear's, fear's something that could be subtle, Mm -hmm. But it's also something that can that can really hinder us, right, in our, right. In our walk with the Lord. So yeah. So this this whole series is talking about is talking about how to overcome fear, how to live fearless. You know, God created you to be bold, to be intrepid. You know, actually, I've got a de the definition of fear from the dictionary right here. Have you got the definition of intrepid? I might need that. Intrepid. I'm going to go. Well, fearless. <laughs> fearless means to be fearless. Okay. I know it's deep, isn't that it? That is deep. It's fearless. Deep. Fearless. fearless. So without like, fear. It means without fear. But bold, brave, or intrepid, okay. like an adventurer, okay. right? To be able to boldly go where no one has boldly gone before, to get Star like Trekking on us, right? Intrepid. To be intrepid, because we are, we are ultimately, God has put into the hands of, of man to go forth and subdue and take authority over the things of the world, right? Amen. Well, how are we going to do that if we're bound up in fear all the time? Mm. You know, if all the time we're worried about maybe what other people think of us, Right, that's or fear of man. Fear of man, or we're worried about, um, is God going to provide? Have I got enough resources to do everything that God's called me to do? Fear of lack. Fear of lack. Or what about I'm afraid of, the, of punishment, of consequences? Fear of punishment. Fear of... <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, yeah. But people are afraid of all different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Can, you know, the, deep down, you know, are we able to trust God to keep to his word? And I think if, if we don't really understand that God is a good God, mm. that He is true to His Word, that He is with us, that He will never leave us or forsake us, that He is always in us all of the time, if we're not really captivated by the love of God, fear is going to play a prominent part in our life. And it, you're right, it is subtle because um, all of these different fears, and that's just a few of them, right? right? When people fear death, they fear pain, they fear... Um, Some people fear death, they fear life. Yeah. They, fear, they fear like lack, they fear abundance. There's yeah. like so many, they, they fear persecution, they fear, you know, uh, being popular. It's like there's, there's so many different angles to it. It's almost like fear itself can, can ma I hate to use the word manifest, but like manifest in our life in different ways. Right. And like, like, we, like I said, it's subtle to the point where mm -hmm. sometimes we don't even realize we're carrying that fear. We actually have that fear operating in our life. We don't even realize it. Right. And then we wonder why we're hindered in some areas. It's yeah. because of these things. And you know, if you, if you take fear to an extreme, then you're going to experience panic attacks, mm -hmm. right? For example, um, mental illness. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of things that stem from fear that is unchecked in our hearts. Yeah. I remember meeting one time um, in, um, in Arizona, we were doing a conference down there and a man came from ministry and uh, he, he asked me to lay hands on him. He put his hands out and he asked me to lay hands on, on him to go um, so that he could go back to the hotel room and lay hands on his wife that she might be healed. Okay. He said that she was, and he said, this is just a simple healing story. And that's right. what I thought. And um, she said, he said, well, you know, you don't understand. She's, she's in bed in the hotel room because she's incapacitated. She's bed bound. She's unable to come down to, to the meeting and receive prayer. I remember this. Yeah. yeah. This is, so I yeah. want you to lay your hands on me so that the power of God's in me so I can go lay hands on my wife in her bed. If that's I, how he was believing. That's how, that's how, he, how he was he believing, receive, right? Yeah. And so as I went to lay my hands on him, the Holy Spirit just, just checked me and said, hang on a second, there's more, there's more to this than what you're seeing. Mm. And he, he revealed to me that this man was just in fear. He was afraid, he was the main carer for his wife. Mm. And he was, just, he was just in fear of, of losing her. Mm. You know, he loved his wife so deeply. And I think we see that a lot in ministry situations. You know, we forget that there's a family caring for somebody that's sick. Mm. There's, a, there's a lot of fear just in the natural environment of the, of the consequences and of the outcome. Um, and so as I, as I went to lay hands on him, I realized that, that there was a problem with fear. And I, and I said that to him, I said, you know, what, what, I'm, what I'm picking up, what I'm sensing when I'm looking at you. And actually, as I started looking in his eyes, I could see it in his face. You can see, the fear, you can yeah. see fear in yeah. people, even if they don't say anything. And, uh, and so I just spoke the peace of God over him that counteract that fear. And it's almost like you could see his body relaxing. He's like, mm. ah, you know, you just, you could see him just becoming at peace. Right. And then really, I don't even really remember doing much beyond that. So he, he went away happy anyway. And um, I, don't, I thought nothing of it. There's there lots of ministry going on, praying for lots of people. Well, that evening I met that man again. And he looked so different. 
You know, his countenance has completely changed. He just had peace. Peace was operating in his body. And a peace is the antidote to fear. If we were in fear, we're not in peace, right? right. It's the, the, they're like opposites. Yep. And so as he came back, I didn't recognize him initially. And he was with a, he was with a woman. And he said, um, you don't recognize me. He kind of called me out. You don't recognize me, do you? And I'm like, no, I'm, I mean, he looks so different. Wow. And I said, you, he said, you prayed for me this morning, you know, with the fear. And I'm like, oh, now I remember. He says, well, I want to introduce you to somebody. And so as he carried on, he said, I want you to, to introduce you to my wife. I'm starting to think to myself, is this the same lady that we were talking about that was, that was bed bound? And as he started to tell me the whole story, he said, as I went back up to my, um, my hotel room, I was in the elevator and the power of God hit my wife in her bed. Yeah. I didn't even know God could do stuff like this, right? <laughs> the power of God hit my wife in her bed and, um, and all of her symptoms left. By the time he got up to the hotel room, she was out of bed. She was getting into the shower by herself. All of her pain left, all of her symptoms left, all of her mobility returned, wow. you know? And I'm like, wow, what just happened? And the Lord showed me that fear had, keep, had kept this lady in bondage. Mm. You see, she had tried, been trying to, um, she wanted to believe God. As she started to explain, she'd, she wanted to believe God and, and, and wean herself off the medication and, and start taking some steps to, in, in faith. But so afraid of losing her was her husband that his fear was actually keeping her in bondage. Mm. You know, I, I, I'm a big believer that, 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 that sympathy will kill you. Right. And, 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 you know, we don't need people around us to be in sympathy. And it's really, really difficult when it's our loved ones. They love us so much. They're almost loving us to death. Right. You know, but he, was lo he loved his wife so much. He was so desperately afraid of losing her that she felt it was actually hindering her from stepping out in faith. Mm. And, and they didn't even realize the dynamic that was going on there. But the minute that that fear was broken in his life, the power of God flowed as she received her healing. Wow. I mean, that kind of, to me, that really took God out of a box. Right. I didn't even know that, that that was even a dynamic that could happen. Yeah, definitely. You know, there's things happen that God does that we, we can't explain sometimes. But it seemed to me like a big part of that healing story was the husband's fear Right, for his he was wife projecting it onto and her. And projecting it onto her. And, you know, we need to say this, you know, if, 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 you've got, uh, if you have a spouse or a loved one who's sick and is going through something, you know, there's never any condemnation. Of course, exactly. there's going to be these emotions. Um, you know, it's, it's tough. I mean, we've been there. We had a, a, you know, a situation where our daughter was, was basically just given a week or so to live. So we've, we've type of been there in, in a certain yeah. degree. And I, I, want, I want to make sure that, you know, we're sympathetic for that. We understand that that is tough and everything else. We're not talking about being cold and not actually caring. No, that, what we're talking about is not letting that fear drive you, not letting that fear be uh, predominant in your life. Right. And, and, you know, sometimes it's, it's, uh, that fear can be, especially when it's sickness and illness, that people yeah. could be in such a fear and then they can be in fear for themselves as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, I wonder how many times people have had fear on their own lives, like, have I got this disease? Or have I, am I, you know, right. what's going to happen to me? And if we meditate on that, I really believe we meditate on that and really, uh, really think about that too much, we can actually open up a doorway to, to, to even receiving those things. Right. So it's we, almost like fear is opposite to, to faith as well, right? Yeah. So if, when we get into fear and we start meditating on, on things that are wrong, I know I've, I've done this, I've been uh, fearful of something happening, and you know, I Before wonder it's sometimes. Happened, and I wonder you're sometimes. You're afraid of the possible consequences. And I'm wondering sometimes. You know, Job said the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. And I wonder sometimes, and you know, I don't want to go off on this to an extreme where if we think about something, it's going to happen to us. I'm not saying that. Right. But I'm saying if we meditate on fear, you know, the enemy is trying to, uh, trying to get us off the word of God. The enemy is basically out to kill, steal and destroy. And he'll give us thoughts that are contrary to God's thoughts, contrary to, right. to good things, contrary to love. And if we meditate on those things, you know, we're allowing those things to, to take root in us. And then before long, we could end up having that as a predominant thought. And, and just, like a stronghold, and all we're thinking about is the worst case. Yeah, and just, just simply, you know, we can't have fear and, and faith operating in our minds, renting space in our head at the same time. Right. So while we're giving space up in our, in our thinking to, to thoughts that are of fear, that are maybe, maybe not even true, you know, a lot of fear is completely irrational. It's based in mm -hmm. lies. Mm -hmm. we, are, um, we, are, we are spending time thinking about things that aren't going to produce life aren't going to produce peace, aren't going to produce um, joy and hope in our life, mm -hmm. but we're, we're, we're taking up our thought life by meditating on something that's very negative and ultimately very destructive. You know, when whatever you think about, it says in the scriptures that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If our, if our hearts are consumed with fear, we're going to hear it. 
Yeah. You know, I, I, I say often one of the ways to, to see what people are believing for is to see the confession that comes out of their mouth. Out Just, of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Exactly. So what we truly believe in, eventually it will come out. Yeah, and you're going you're gonna to hear it in, in how, people, how people speak. You know, um, I think all of us in our life can probably recollect a time or a person in our life that's essentially negative. Mm -hmm. And being around negative people on a consistent basis right. is toxic, isn't it? They're always thinking about the worst case. It's hard always to be around them for long. negative to, to say. Yeah, and it, is, it can be. It's almost contagious. Yeah. If, if they're just talking about people, for instance, if, if someone's always talking negatively about a person, you'll start thinking that way about that person, even though you didn't even recognize those traits in them because they're pointing out all the, all the bad in them, if you like, all yeah. the wrong in them. This is a, a scripture I like. This is in Romans uh, 12, verse 21. Romans 12, verse 21. It probably goes along with what we're saying. It yeah. says, do not, Paul says here, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And I really believe that, uh, you know, fear is, is, this type of fear we're talking about, it's, it's evil, it's not good. Because what it's doing it's is it's making God. you concentrate, it's making you focus on the negative, it's making you focus on the worst case. And I do this sometimes, I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing this all the time, this is something I do sometimes, but if I have a fear, if I'm fearful of something, maybe fear of lack, mm -hmm. like we're going to run out, we're not going to have the resources to, to pay our bills or whatever, or, or fear of, of, of a, a, you know, being sick, I'm going to, you know, I've got a film shoot coming up, I don't want to get a cold, I don't want to be sick, that little fear gets in your head. Sometimes I eyeball it. Sometimes I think, hang on a minute, what's the worst case here? Like actually, and like I said, don't meditate on this, but just for a second, I think, hang on a minute, what, what's the worst that could happen? We, we might not be able to pay that bill this month. So then we'll just have to phone the people and tell them we'll pay it next month. I mean, it's like when you actually rationalize things, a lot of the time fear is irrational. It is. And fear will make you go places in your mind and you're more scared of the, of the fear than the actual thing happening. And if you look at what the actual thing is going to be that happens, I remember this is a... A, a fun example, but when I was, uh, I don't know, I think I was in high school, there was a big kid in school, and um, it, apparently I offended him somehow, and they said, he's gonna, he's gonna deck you after school. He's, he's gonna, gonna beat you up. He's gonna beat you up after school, and all day at school, I was like, oh man, this guy's, this guy's gonna, I mean, he's tougher than me, he's bigger than me. You were imagining it, weren't you? I was you? imagining it, I was letting that fear you take hold of me. You were feeling the pain before he'd even hit you. And you know me, I'm a, I'm a lover, not a fighter. He's a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> I'm not into fighting, so, true. so I'm like, I don't wanna fight this guy. And I, and I was like, I don't even know how I'd upset him. But anyway, the talk of the school, you know it escalates, you know, in, in school. Oh, and it gets but, bigger and bigger yeah, and bigger. Yeah, everyone's like, he's going he's gonna to do this to you and do that to you. And I was like, all scared. So eventually I was like, I'm just going to, I went out, the, the, the bell went for the end of school. I went out there into the, into the schoolyard, you know, in the, the entrance of the school. And he come walking towards me and he just, he, I mean, one punch, he, he punched me once like that. And then he said, now don't say that again. And so then walked off. And I was like, is that it? It wasn't even that like, bad. It really wasn't that bad. It didn't even hurt. I was like, that was it. I was in fear all day and fear and trembling about what he was going to do to me. And I was like, that wasn't even that bad. And that was such isn't, a silly but, example. But isn't that what fear does? I wasn't it's... planning to share that example. I've always embarrassed myself. <laughs> okay. People are going to think now I'm some sort of wimp, you know, don't even fight back or anything. But it, was, it wasn't high school. It was elementary. I think it was kindergarten. It was like first grade. I was like, oh I was like three years old. That's how old are I was. Are you afraid of what the people think of you? Now I'm, I'm afraid of people thinking <laughs> I'm going to be I'm a wimp. You know, anyway. but, it, but isn't this how fear starts? It yeah. starts as a small seed, as a yeah. small thought, and then during the day, it's bigger and because bigger. you are focused on it, whatever you focus on gets bigger. It's like we yeah. put a magnifying glass over that thought. Yeah. It starts to get bigger and longer yeah. and more consequences. Mm -hmm. And before we know it, we've built it up to this big thing that's not even necessarily based on any truth at all. Right. Or it might have an element of truth, but we've taken it out of all perspective. We've wasted our time. We've wasted yep. our energy. We've not been productive in other areas because we've allowed that thought to consume our thinking. Yeah. And it and and most of the time, these things aren't even these aren't even recognised anyway. Right. So most you of know? the time, and a lot, yeah, a lot of the time, this fear is either irrational or it's not. Even, I like the uh, the you know the false evidence appearing real. That's an acronym that we use for fear: false evidence appearing real. I remember one time when I, I mean for, for years, actually, when you, we we got married, this was still plaguing me. But um, I had a terrible fear of, of escalators. I remember this. Yeah, it and was... it was not even rational. When I was five years, this is where it started. I was in a department store when I was five years old, okay? And I remember playing around at the top of the escalators while my mum was looking at clothes or something. And my mum had told me, stay away from the, from the top of the, the stairs there. So stay because away her from mum, them, right? let me explain this, because... The, because her mum said, don't go near the escalators. So I shouldn't have been there. What's the first thing Carly does? She's going to go towards the escalators. Yes. <laughs> it's true. It's He's got true. this thing that I'm like really stubborn or something. But anyway. I'm not saying anything. Strong will. Strong, strong, strong will. Strong will. It's kept me alive. Anyway, strong it's been good. <laughs> So I was playing, I was doing, I was doing something I shouldn't have been doing anyway. I was playing around the top of the escalators and I held onto the handrail 
and I didn't realise the handrail was moving, and so I'm holding onto the handrail, but my feet are still at the top of the step. Pulled you in. And so it sucked me down Do you think we could go escalator. back and get the security video? Because that would be really... I'd love to see that video again. They probably didn't have video cameras then anyway. <laughs> Your face must have been like... <laughs> Yeah, no, anyway, right? sorry. But I fell down. This is down. really traumatic. I'm making fun you. of it. I'm sorry. It's so sympathetic. See, this is years of trauma. <laughs> thank you. Um, so it's, it sucked me in. And, well, you know what? Fear sucks you in, doesn't it? Yep. Isn't, isn't that what it does? Yep. It sucked me in. My feet stood, stayed at the top, but I fell down the escalator, down the metal steps, Oof. and cut myself. And uh, it, it just, it was, it was bad. Traumatic. But from being, you know what? I'm, then I'm getting to like 15 years old, and I, all, all of my childhood, I would avoid going on an escalator. And it happened one time. It didn't happen lots of it. Just one time. It doesn't mean it's going to happen again. But you had that but fear. It's, it's irrational. Even into adulthood, you know, I had my, my kids were little. We were traveling around the, the subway, the underground in London. And uh, they, have they those were, big escalators. They're in buggies. I mean, they're they're like, in strollers. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's really a pain if you're traveling on the underground and you don't want to use the escalator. You have to stop at stations where they have elevators and things. Right. And, I mean, it, it's really inconvenient. But I would go out of my way not to get on an escalator because deep down on the inside of me, I would have this fear that I was going to fall down one again. And it wasn't rational. I mean, I'm a grown woman now, right? I know how to well, stand. you're a woman. We're not sure how, if you're grown or not. You're full of compliments today, aren't you, honey? Right? I'm a grown woman now. I fell down one time. Doesn't right. mean it's going to happen again. You know, I know how to hold on now. <laughs> you're you're say, I know I'm a big girl now, <laughs> right? Doesn't mean it's going to happen again. Um, but, but, but still, every time, that fear was real to me. Yeah. It was real. And every time, I mean, I thought about going on an escalator or if, 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 I, if I made myself do it, when I, when I held on, my, my knuckles, would, when you were there, I mean, yep. I was sweating, my knuckles would go white, my heart would beat really fast. I felt like I was, gonna, I was getting all dizzy. It was the start of a panic attack That's is a what it was. irrational fear. It, it was completely yeah. irrational based on a negative experience. Mm -hmm. There's no way to say that that's going to happen again. And even if it did happen again, you know, I didn't die the, the first yeah. time. Yeah, like, like I said, The eyeball consequence it. wasn't even that bad. Eyeball the fear. So what's the worst that can happen? You could trip and you could hurt yourself a little bit. I mean, escalators aren't that bad. <clears throat> you know what right. I mean? So it's like, it's like fear of flying. A lot of people have fear of flying. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is, in some ways, people say, well, that's, that's rational. I mean, you're going up in this plane and it's, it's you dangerous. You fall out of the sky. But you know <laughs> that flying is actually the, the safest way of travel. A commercial airline is the safest way to travel, scientifically proven, statistically. Traveling an aeroplane, it's, it's far more dangerous to drive in a car, or, and it's more dangerous to walk down a sidewalk than to travel in an aeroplane. Right. Statistically. So if you... Because there's, there's so many millions of people that fly in aeroplanes, yeah. and so few people, you know, there's crashes. It's well, getting anyway. dark, isn't it? Yeah. But anyway, what I mean is, <laughs> it's an irrational fear, in a way, that, of an aeroplane. Yeah. Even though it's... I can understand why, because you're going up in a... In a, you know, in a Flying and stuff like but that. If, but as believers, here's the thing, right? Even if the plane did crash, even okay. if the worst thing happened, where are we right. going to end up? We're going to heaven. We're going to heaven. Is that so bad? Oh, we'd be a survivor. You'd right. Be okay. But, but, I fly all the time. Seriously, Don't start to, talking to me about a this crash in the Honey, this series is about being fearless. I okay. think it, I think it might be for you. Okay. I'm going to conquer these fears. I think <laughs> we're going to see you delivered from fear. Okay. By the end of this series, you two like can be person. bold and intrepid. You can. You need to watch the whole series because you can firsthand witness Ashley's transformation as we go <laughs> through this teaching. <laughs> I have a few little things that I'm still, you know, I'm not sure about. It's all good. <laughs> but here, here, here's the point that we're making: is that fear affects everybody mm. to a certain degree. Everybody, whether you've got fear that's based in a really serious traumatic past experience, whether you've been through something horrible that you could say, you know what, it's 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 a legitimate fear. If, mm. if fear could be legitimate, this was a legitimate fear, or it could be a completely irrational fear that's really not based on very much at all. But it's very, it's still very real to you. Mm. Where, where the fear comes from is almost irrelevant. It still feels very real in the moment. Mm -hmm. It is false evidence appearing real. But, you know, the Lord has something better for us. Yeah. Amen. The Lord has something better for us. I want to read this scripture. This is in, um, this is in Hebrews 2, verse 14. It says, So then, as the children share in flesh and blood, he likewise, he's talking about Jesus, took part in these, so that through death, through his death, through Jesus' death, he might destroy him who has the power of death. That is the devil. Mm. See, the devil had, had the power of death, right? But look at verse 15. And deliver those, like you, honey, who through fear of death were throughout their lives subject to bondage. You see, fear keeps people in bondage, sometimes through their whole life. Yep. 
And you know, we're not just the fear of death, but ultimately that is that is the the end result of it. Mm. You know, um, if I'm if I'm afraid of being sick, I'm afraid of the doctor's report. You know, what might happen? I'm afraid of pain. I'm afraid of you know the treatment. I'm afraid of ultimately dying, mm. or maybe it's fear of lack. You know, if I don't have enough to eat, then I could be destitute. Then we might starve to death. Mm. Then we might be homeless. Then we might not. Then we might not survive. Ultimately, everything circulates back to this fear of death. Right. That's the end result. You know, I'm, I'm afraid of what people might think of me. What if, if, they, if they cast me out, if I become lonely, if I become disassociated with society, mm -hmm. if I become an outcast, if I can't get a job? You see, if we trace all of these things back, ultimately they end in a fear of death. Right, that's the big Death one. of something, a death, a loss, mm -hmm. a grief of yeah. something. Yeah. But Jesus says here, he's come to deliver us from the fear of death who throughout their entire lives were subject to bondage. God, Jesus has better for us than to live in fear. Amen. But the first step to overcoming fear, and, and that, as this description was saying, fearless means to be less from fear, without fear, to be bold, to be intrepid. In other words, to be very courageous. Right. I remember the, the Lord's word to Joshua in Joshua 1.8. He says, you know, do not be afraid, Joshua. Mm -hmm. Several times, actually, and Joshua is always fighting people, yep. he's always scrapping people. <laughs> Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Only be bold and very courageous. Yep. And he keeps repeating himself, actually. Yep. And I think, why? why does he keep repeating himself to Joshua? Maybe it's because Joshua needs to hear it. He needs it. Right? Yeah, verse 7, only be strong. Only be courageous. And, um, you know, the, yeah, all the way through Joshua 1, Joshua chapter 1 is great. You know, Joshua taken over from Moses. And you can understand that's, that was a big deal for him. And, and uh, you know, he may have doubted himself. He may have thought, am I, am I able to do this? And, you know, such big boots to fill, if you like, after, after Moses. And that's why the Lord really set him out here on, on Joshua chapter 1 mm -hmm. and showed him, you know, don't be afraid, be courageous. And I always say this, the Lord's never going to ask us to do something that he hasn't already given us the ability to do. So when Jesus told the disciples, do not fear, when Jesus told the, the uh, epileptic uh, boy's uh, father, you know, don't fear, only believe, that's because we, he's given us the ability to do that. He's given right. us the ability to not fear. He's given right. us the ability to, 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 to change our thoughts away from that fear and put them onto the truth, put them onto, right. on, into faith. Right. And ultimately, fear is part of the curse. Mm -hmm. It's part of the curse that we've been redeemed from. So in the same way you might attack sickness or you might attack poverty in your life, think, or you might attack sin in your life, think, you know what, Jesus redeemed me from all of these things. I'm not going to live. I'm not going to live a life of sin. I'm not going to live a life of sickness. I'm, I'm, I know that's not from God and I'm going to attack it, right? We're yeah. big believers in healing in, the, in our family, okay? Yeah. We're also big believers that God has prospered us in our family. And that's why we, we, know, we, do, we attack lack, right? Yeah. We attack lack and we attack sickness. But, but how often have we just lived with fear? Mm. We've just learned to live with it. You know, Jesus doesn't want us to live with fear. He wants us to have the same hatred for fear in our life, that same intolerance for fear in our life than we do for sickness or poverty or, or any of those other things that he paid for as part of his atonement. Yeah. It's not a normal characteristic of a believer. And it's different. We're not talking here about the fear of the Lord, which is talking about reverence. We're talking about a fear that involves torment. Right. And there's a, there's a scripture in, a, in 1 John 4. Have you got that in the passage translation? There, 1 John 4, 16 is in the passion here. It says, uh, we have come into an intimate experience with God's love and we trust in the love he has for us. I like that. We trust in the love that he has for us. God is love. Those who are living in love are living in God and God lives through them. Amen. By living in mm -hmm. God, love has been brought to its full expression in us that we may be fearlessly, we, that we may fearlessly face the day of judgment because all the, that Jesus now is, so are we in this world. That's uh, 1 John 4, 17, 15 through to 17. Amen. And uh, that's in the Passion Translation. You know, um, this is in the modern English. It's really similar to the New King James. But in, in verse, um, what have I got here? In verse 16, it says, And we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. When we come to know and really believe the love that God has for us, it changes us. Yeah. You see, in verse 17, it says, In this way, God's love is perfected in us so that we may have boldness. Yeah. Remember, one of the characteristics of being fearless is being bold, is being brave, is being intrepid. It says that we may have boldness on the day of judgment because as He is, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Yeah. Verse 18, there is no fear. No fear at all in love, in God's love, because perfect love casts out fear. Amen. God's love is that antidote to any fears that we might have in our life. And it says, 
because fear has to do with punishment or in some translations torment. It's torment. New King James is fear, fear involves torment. Right, and that's the thing. Fear unchecked will torment us. It will hold us in bondage. But it says whoever fears is not, is not perfect in love. God loves us so much. He, pray, he paid the price for our fear that why, we might not have to live in fear, not have to live in bondage and not, but not, may not be subject to the torment. In other words, not let the devil mess and rent space in their head by, by suggesting to us unfounded fear that's based on lies or by magnifying a previous negative experience and blowing it up into all, all proportions. Out of all proportions. Out yeah, of yeah, all yeah. proportions, mm -hmm. right? Because you know, the fear comes from the enemy. He, he had the power of death, as we read in, in Hebrews chapter 2. Jesus defeated the power of death. He yeah. defeated the power of the enemy who has the, who has the power of fear to operate in our life. The enemy doesn't have any power in our life, only what we give him when we choose, choose to place our trust in his, in his words rather than in God's words. Yeah. And we, when we do that, that's where fear creeps in. So right now, I want to. This is the very beginning of our series called Fearless. So I hope you can join us for um, the next um, the next programs. We're really going to dig down into this. But I want you to be set free from fear. Jesus is not Amen. God's best for you to live and tolerate fear in any area of your life. Let's let's pray for the people, Amen. and, and we're going to see some of people set free in this very area. Amen. Right now, Lord, we pray for everyone watching and listening. Amen. I thank you, Lord. Your will for us is to not have fear, not have torment in our life. And right now. We pray for people listening and watching who have fear, who have torment in their life. Mm. And right now we say no more fear in yeah. Jesus' Perfect name. Perfect love casts out fear. Yes, Lord. I thank you. They're going to have a new revelation of how much you love them and how secure they are in you. And I thank you. They're not going to experience that fear anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank Praise you, Lord. God. Well, thank thanks you, for being with us today. We'll be back real soon. And until next time, remember, don't just live a normal life. And Jesus paid for you to be able to live the abundant life. To order your copy of this teaching, visit our website, teradesministries.com, or call us at 719-600-3344. Thanks for being with us today. You know, we'd love for you to have the rest of this teaching. We really drill down and get to, you know, expose fear for what it is and expose this for what it is so you can really overcome fear in your life. So go ahead and get the teaching series. The details are on your screen. You can live fearlessly. You can live with a new boldness. You can live in the love of God to the point where you're not experiencing this fear and this torment in your life anymore. So get the products below. They're going to bless you. To order your copy of this teaching, visit our website, teradesministries.com, or call us at 719-600-3344. You know, when we was believing for our daughter, Hannah's healing, you know, we loved God and uh, we loved the Word of God, but because no one taught us the truth, we didn't see that manifest until we understood the truth about healing. Our whole family has been impacted by this understanding of what Jesus has already done. And so now we're living life out of victory rather than living life out of defeat. And that's why we're so excited here at Terrorist Ministries. We want people to be empowered to walk in the promises of God. Visit our website, teradesministries.com, to get more resources that will help you live an abundant life. God wants the best for everybody. He wants the abundant life for everyone, and we want to help people walk in those good things.